Spherical mirrors. We know a plane mirror, a mirror with a plane surface. Then what is a spherical mirror? Is this also a plane mirror? This is a mirror as it has the smooth reflecting surface. But this is not a plane mirror as this reflecting surface is not flat. If the reflective surface of the mirror is spherical, it is a spherical mirror. The difference between the two is that the reflecting surface of this mirror is curved inwards, whereas the reflecting surface of this mirror is curved outwards. Can you think of examples where you have seen curved mirrors? Interesting things about the spherical mirrors with the help of this spoon. Of a spoon is a good approximation of curved mirror. Spoon has two reflecting surfaces, one curved inside and the other curved outside. They are called spherical mirrors because their reflecting surface is a part of a sphere. You can clearly see that the reflecting surfaces of both the mirrors form the part of the sphere. The now, mirror that has its reflecting surface curved inwards is called a concave mirror and the mirror that has its reflecting surface curved outwards is called convex mirror. Yes, inwards concave and outwards convex. We need to know the meaning of certain terms. First term, pole. What is a pole? The center of the reflecting surface of the mirror is called the pole. The mirror. We pole is denoted by the letter P, center of curvature. The reflecting surface forms a section of the sphere. This sphere must have a center. This center of the sphere is called the center of curvature denoted by C. The center of curvature of a convex mirror lies behind it. However, it lies in front of the mirror in case of a concave mirror. Radius of curvature of which the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror forms a part is called the radius of curvature of the mirror. It is represented by the letter R. Principal axis Join the pole and the center of curvature with a line. This line is called the principal axis. The midpoint of the line segment joining the pole P and the center of curvature C is called the focal point. It is represented by the letter F, focal length. The distance between the pole and the principal focus of a spherical mirror is called the focal length. It is represented by the letter F, aperture. Aperture in simple terms is that part of the mirror which is exposed to light. In our mirror, this is its aperture since the light can be incident anywhere in this region. If we hide some part of the mirror with an opaque substance, then its aperture is reduced. Mathematically, it is this length. In this lesson, we discuss about the spherical mirrors whose aperture is much smaller than its radius of curvature. There is a relationship between the radius of curvature R and focal length F of a spherical mirror. For spherical mirrors with small apertures, the radius of curvature is found to be equal to twice the focal length. We write it as R equal to 2F. Now we are going to learn about the details of convex and concave mirrors separately. First, Reflection in a convex mirror As a light ray strikes their curved surface, it is reflected according to the law of reflection, which states that the angle of incident light is equal to the angle of reflection. The ray of light approaching the mirror from a source is known as the incident ray, and the ray bouncing off the mirror is known as the reflected ray. The reflected rays appear to come from a point on the principal axis. This point is called the principal focus of the convex mirror. The principal focus is represented by the letter F. According to the sign convention of measurements, the focal length of a convex mirror is positive as the distance is measured in the direction of the incident ray and is taken from the pole of the mirror. Light rays from a distant object reflect off the convex mirror and diverge. Because the reflected rays never intersect, 
a virtual image forms behind any convex mirror. Images produced by this type of mirror are always virtual, upright and reduced in size. One application of convex mirror. You may have observed the rear view mirror of a car. It shows the rear view of the car. However, there is a warning which is written on the mirror. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. If that is so, then why are objects in the mirror closer than they appear? When an object is placed in front of a convex mirror, a virtual, small and erect image is formed in between the pole and the focus of the convex mirror. The image so formed is smaller than the object, therefore it seems to be far away from the mirror. Due to this property, convex mirrors are used as rear view mirrors in vehicles with a warning Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Summary Convex mirrors form only upright, virtual images. The images are always smaller than the actual objects. Now, we are going to learn about concave mirror. Reflection in a concave mirror Light ray strikes the mirror's curved surface. It reflects according to the law of reflection, which states that the angle of incident light is equal to the angle of reflection. The ray approaching the mirror is known as the incident ray, and the ray bouncing off is known as the reflected ray. Light rays parallel to the principal axis are falling on a concave mirror. They all meet or intersect at a point on the principal axis of the mirror. This point is called the principal focus of the concave mirror. According to the sign convention of measurements, the focal length of a concave mirror is negative as the distance is measured from the pole and opposite to the incident rays. If the object is placed beyond the center of curvature, C, the image will be formed between the center of curvature and the focal point. In this situation, the image will appear not only smaller than the object, but also inverted. If the object is placed at the center of curvature, C, the image will be formed at the center of curvature. Although the image will be the same size as the original object, it will be inverted. If the object is moved toward the mirror between the center of curvature and the focal point, the image will now form outside the center of curvature, C. In this case, the image will now be larger than the object, but it will be inverted. If the object is moved closer to the mirror and placed at the focal point, the reflected rays will pass parallel to one another without converging and without forming an image. If the object is moved even further towards the mirror, this time between the focal point and the mirror, a virtual image is formed behind the mirror. The image is now upright and larger than the object. One application of concave mirror. Have you observed beaming headlights of a car? It is a parallel beam of light produced due to the presence of a concave reflector in the headlight. The part of a transparent sphere in which the outer surface is silvered will act as a concave mirror. The reflecting surface is curved inwards and concave in nature. If we place a light source at the focus of a concave mirror, the light rays after reflection go parallel to the principal axis. This is why a concave mirror is used in headlights of vehicles. So, now we know how a beam of light appears from vehicles at night and why objects in the mirror are closer than they appear.